the first, probably the first hard nose black scream ever done on Broadway. Black theater was, there was Raisin in the Sun and the musical Raisin and uh, Pearly Victorious. But there was nothing that came from the stomach, not no visceral black theater. Melvin wrote something using jazz riffs about various people living in a ghetto and their pain. The postman who goes crazy, the guy that's being executed, the bag lady, the black cop on the street, the kid that's running away from the cop. Come on, baby. Me. He thinks that because he can run fast, he can outrun a bullet. And as, he, as the bullet hits him and he dies, the feet never stop running. Those were people that had no voices in the society, and Melvin gave them a voice. What I'm trying to do is train or make opportunities for other blacks um, to, to explore wherever their heads lie. So there's, there's a, broader, a broader thing. Um, one of the complaints leveled against Sweetback, it was um, um, all blacks weren't like that. Well, absolutely not. Just like um, any of the 19 segments in um, Ain't Supposed to Die a Natural Death is not blackness in itself. Even the ensemble of all those things do not represent the mirrored facets. Uh, the only thing to do about that is get more brothers and sisters up there where they can um, express where they're coming from and what they know. When the show started, the house lights are on and the set is visible. There's no curtain. And the band plays the Star Spangled Banner. And this is the early 1970s. And people are having to define themselves by hearing the Star Spangled Banner in a theater like they hear it in a baseball game and they don't know what to do. Did it mean if they stood up, were they with Reagan or Nixon? And if they sat, did they mean they were aligning themselves with the militants? It was a very, very profound statement. We just thought, this is what you do. You're supposed to produce plays that are meaningful, that have something to say, it's about something. So we did it. We didn't know, nor did we think, we didn't, there weren't even the terms marketing in those days. We just did it. What turned out is that an, un, an audience that had heretofore never gone to the theater started to show up. The audience did not know what a hard ticket sale was. And people would buy their ticket, they'd come early, sit down, and wait an hour, and somebody comes and say, you sit in my seat? What do you mean I'm sitting in your seat? I've been here for an hour. They didn't realize each seat had a number on it. Some numbers were devastating. The last number in the show is Minnie Gentry, who plays a bag lady. She'd been wandering around for the entire evening on the street. And then she turns to the audience and says, put a curse on you. Put a curse on you. May all of your children end up junkies too. Your mammy tricked by the pound to buy that house. Your young daughters Give rich old dudes head in limousines too. Put a curse on you. The audience went crazy. It, it spoke such pain that people screamed and yelled. People were weeping. It was a killer. That meanness squeezed in them ain't got nothing else to do. When the lady at the end says, I put a curse on you, May all your children end up junkies too. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, I had an interracial marriage. When my daughter's father left and my marriage fell apart, um, everything I believed in fell apart because people divided in my life on a racial basis. And um, And when I went to see ain't supposed to die that night and heard these voices saying what I felt and what I was experiencing and what I knew my daughter was going to experience. Um, I was really shaken to my core. That's the truth. Truth could be said in, in such a way that, you know, the people that got uncomfortable when they saw ain't supposed to die, they were shamed because it told the truth about America. And suck your bones, too! 
there was no reconciliation. It's so Melvin-esque not to have a reconciliation where everybody comes together very happily and the, the addict goes to rehab and this goes to that. No, it was, it's going to continue. The New York Times roasted it. Clive Barnes found it offensive. And he wrote this awful notice and then apologized on the radio the next day. And he said, I missed it. I missed its pain. It helped for a while when we got the seven nominations. But for the most part, the white audience was afraid of it. They didn't want to be yelled at. White people wanted to come to the theater for entertainment. Tonight, from the stage of the Broadway Theater in New York City, the League of New York Theaters presents the 26th annual celebration of the American Theater Wing's Tony Awards with scenes from Jesus Christ Superstar, No No Nanette, Ain't Supposed to Die a Natural Death, and the musicals of Rodgers and Hammerstein. Ain't, su Ain't Supposed to Die a Natural Death is a series of songs and musical sketches which surround us with the heartbreak and the humor, the frustrations and the lifestyle of the urban black ghetto. In the writing, uh, the book, in other words, the music and the lyrics, they are all the passionate work of one man, Melvin Van Peebles. And as the critic of the New York Times said in his review, New York and its friendly neighborhood ghetto has moved away somewhat from Damon Runyon. And Mr. Van Peebles is taking note of the transition. I suspect, the Times continues, that this is a fair picture of a 1971 street scene, not, dear friend, on the street where you live. Did it have lasting impact on some people? Sure. You just tap the sens sensibilities of somebody, it stays. And uh, it certainly opened the door for other, quote, black theater. Oh, yeah. 